Yo, what's going up? It's your boy Nup Trap here, and um, today I'm gonna be going looking over this video that came to my line. Uh, so it's predicting the end of Dragon Ball Super by totally not Mark. Um, that being said, let's get into the video. It's very interesting to see what he says. I'm interested to see what he says. I haven't been able to get out of my head. Framed how I thought about Dragon Ball Super's future entirely. This scene that consumed my imagination was the birth of Black Freezer. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Black Freezer broke the internet. Even though it was a manga, it broke the internet. Black Freezer came through with that Black Air Force energy. You know what I mean? Striking in form. It wasn't this dark like new Henry. facade that gave me pause. It wasn't this incredible newfound strength that he could nuts. wield with frightening effectiveness, or even the fact he took out both Goku and Vegeta in a one single punch. movement. What captured? He came in with one punch man action. No lie. My imagination was everything else. What he said, how he said it, and all the small choices he made narratively. So perhaps being counted as part of the universe. I've been spending some time in another dimension, you see. You would happen to have any place after all. Any plans after all this. As it happens, I shift the music in the waiter. <laughs> so he was, this is the key part, right? He was in another dimension. I wonder what dimension he was in. I mean, we all know that Goku and Vegeta traveled to the place where, you know, the time travel difference. Um, but let's see. Between these larger movements, I think you can tell so much about a story and where it's going based on the curious words and choices of key characters. And this Frieza was different somehow. Almost hinting towards something new and exciting on the horizon. Something huge and then... Oh yeah, nothing. that's what? true. Yo, they hit us with that super movie. It was like, what is this? I ain't gonna lie, yeah, that took me by surprise. Everybody was wearing on the black freezer, like, whoa, where's that, where that chapter at? Followed this earth-shattering moment was little more than an expansion or recap of Dragon Ball Super's latest film, Superhero. Leaving me still with the questions I've had all these years. Where did Toriyama intend for this story to go, and could we right, find dude. any hints in this long series that might offer a glimpse into a possible future for Dragon Ball Super? I think we can. And more than that, it's finally time I satiate my curiosity unearth as many hints and clues to a possible future within this long story and present my official predictions and hopes for a black oh, Frieza arc. I've never trained a day in Yo, that would probably be like, I wonder if Toriyama had anything written down. Because I know Toriyama is about to take over, but if anything was written down from, you know, you know how rappers be having like mad mixtapes and after they die it comes out. I hope it's like that with Toriyama. My life, there was never a need. Imagine what could happen if I unlock my latent potential. Oh, that's John's hype, bro. Good, Good stuff, bro. Curious ones. Well, I enjoyed my all too brief slumber. Did that upstart freezer manage to eradicate planet Vegeta? No, this can't be real. This is not the way this ends. You keep your word, I'll you! Tired. By now, you should know that better than anyone, don't you? <laughs> this is great. This is great. This is great already, man. I'm hooked. The beauty of this prediction is that it's not entirely my own. There's a character often overlooked and forgotten in the story that could hold the key to just about everything. The Oracle Fish. Oh. At the very beginning of Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, he'd be, he be saying some dumb stuff, but yeah, yeah, you might be right. You might be right. For the Oracle Fish's prophecy outlined an arch rival that would appear in 39 years. But the Super Saiyan God was a prophecy Beerus introduced, not the Seer. It was Beerus, who according to Whis, has visions which reliably amount to nothing. So, if not a Super Saiyan God, who else might have emerged after 39 years? Well... The events that kick off Resurrection F occur just six short months following the events of Battle of Gods. Right. In other words, it's entire. So, so Bear was trying to fast forward that years, huh? All right. That's where I'm getting from. It's really possible that this arch rival Beerus awoke to meet wasn't Goku or some Super Saiyan God, but another great power that would rise up and change the course of Super's story 
forever. And that power I'm talking about is Frieza. Now, mm. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. This sounds insane. Goku's That's achievement crazy. of Super Saiyan God is really significant. Isn't Super's version of Frieza pretty much the exact same as he was in Z? Absolutely fucking not. If there's any character in Super's history that has changed a staggering amount, it's Frieza. And the greater That's true. and more gradual the change of character. Him and Vegeta have the most character development throughout the whole uh, series, I think. Him and Vegeta, yep. Character, the easier it is for us to see where they will ultimately end up. So what can Frieza's story tell us? Frieza, as we see him today, is unrecognizable to that which he once was. Tyrant. And that's not a criticism, that's a comp. Yo, I love that scene right there. That's a that's an awesome scene. Compliment. In Z, Frieza was hit. I mean, a tyrant with a poisonous god complex. Unwavering in his worldview, he thought himself unstoppable and absolute. This was yeah, part of what made him such an... He was nuts. He was like a, like, like a conqueror, a tyrant. Yeah, he was a dictator. He was everything. Interesting foil for the likes of Goku, whose worldview ran totally antithetical to that. During their legendary clash, each of them would try to nudge or move the other from their respective position, either through offers to join forces or chances to fight another day. But neither succeeded, both unwilling to compromise what they were, and in the end, both were forced into a position neither wanted. The message was crystal clear. That was fucking awesome, and yeah. Yeah, that was a great arc, man. When that, when that free dynamic, when Trezor, Super Saiyan came through, that was tough, man. Frieza couldn't I was change. Running home every Blinded day. by his own narcissism at the forefront of the Android's arc, Frieza's inability to grow I, from or times. accept his first ever Seriously. loss resulted in another unexpected and this nah, time deadly. Nah, they did. They did Frieza dirty right here, man. That was crazy. When he got split in half so easy, I was like, ugh. Yeah, they did him dirty. They did him like Yamcha right there. Defeat at the hands of one more Super Saiyan. In the end, he was nothing more than an uncompromising psychotic madman, bitter and pathetic. Then Super happened, and everything started to change. Frieza returned, and while still viciously thirsty for vengeance, there was an immediate but quiet acceptance that he was no match for the Saiyans. And so, for the first time ever, he trained. This was gigantic. Yo, it's nuts that him without training, he was he was up there with Super Saiyan. That's nuts. That's crazy. He started OP. Born OP. There's a certain seat back to life. Messed up. Reality. Impatience started to change. Frieza returned, and while still viciously thirsty for vengeance, there was an immediate but quiet acceptance that he was no match for the Saiyans. And so, for the first time ever, he trained. This was gigantic for the character. Prior to this, you could tell even his minions were apprehensive to inform him of Goku and Ko's development since his death, simply because the old Frieza would have cut them down where they stood That's for true. daring That's to suggest he a, he anyone. Was a, he was a tyrant at heart. He was he did not hear no bad news. Still the man good news. You will live. Could ever be if it's not superior true. to him. But this Frieza has learned from his past mistakes and became impossibly strong in just four short months. In that time, he managed to bridge the gap between he and the Saiyans to the point that he almost succeeded. Yo, but ultimately, it was that lingering months. vitriolic anger, that fragile and bruised ego from Namek, which remained and led him to make a severe error. Impatience. Impatience which made him little more hey. than a fatigue. Yeah, that's a fact, yo. He he flipped out. He was not patient. He he should have he should have trained a little more and got used to the power. You know how um when the Goku and Gohan went into the hyperbolic time chamber, they stayed in Super Saiyan form for the whole almost the whole duration of that. He should have done that, but he was so impatient. He's like, I'm strong and I'm gonna go fight. Like, nah, bro, it don't work like that. <laughs> Sprinter trying to win a marathon. In reality. This fight was over before it even began. That's Fast fact. forward a bit, and we're once again reintroduced to Frieza for the Tournament of Power. And upon hearing Goku's offer... Nah, these scenes right here in the Neither World, these are like background images. Like, these images are sick. I love these images. Frieza further demonstrates adaptation and change. He accepts his current know. circumstances and his lack... He's like a cat, though. He's like cunning. He, he chance to change of leverage and instead of succumbing once again to the anger that has defined his character's failures he accepts goku's oh, gotcha. offer to earn his life back 
The old Frieza would never have been able to comprehend this offer, let alone leverage it for his own gain. Which is fitting for that strange and vulnerable scene at the very end asks both us as viewers and indeed Frieza himself to cast our minds back, to consider the final moments of Namek one more time, and for the first time, Frieza sees and understands that moment. Does he really though? Because, I don't know. He did come back and punched him. I don't know. For what it was. Oh, Vegeta did warn Goku. Like, he's gonna, <laughs> like, you're gonna regret doing, bringing this boy back. You're gonna regret it. Genuine, honest charity. There is just so much history and natural introspection packed into that short but perfect exchange. An admission from Frieza that he was wrong and that he can genuinely trust Goku's word and that despite being brought back to life, some of those more poisonous traits which blinded him to reality may have stayed well and truly dead forever. Nah, and this holds true for that. both the anime and the manga. Now, as I said, the super anime does conclude at this point. I don't know. It's the Lord of Evil, man. I, I, I don't think that boy changed. I think that boy is just plain, plain and safe so he can stay alive long enough to get stronger and come back. Mm -hmm. However, Toriyama's story most definitely does not. Right, Through two films and more than 60 chapters of a long manga, Dragon Ball's and Frieza's story continues and develops. In Broly, that sense of urgency and anger we saw in Resurrection F has been well and truly replaced entirely by patience, strategy, and a new appreciation for the game, as he puts it. He still wishes to usurp Goku and friends. He still wishes for revenge. Like I said, my boy is playing the game. Yep. He is the game, you know what I'm saying? He's a sl he's playing chess and y'all playing checkers. But he's not going to ruin the challenge by wishing for immortality, and he's not going to throw a tantrum or his life away childishly. He's aware of what must be done. He admits that in a fight, Goku and Vegeta always seem to get the better of him, and so takes that humility one step farther by confessing yeah, that he, he too would hour. like someone to fight alongside with against them. This scene from Broly and all those which preceded it in Super are what foreshadow and grant meaning to the actions and choices Frieza takes Black. during his grand unveiling of Black Frieza. Yeah. So, with all of that in mind, what can we learn from Chapter 87 with Black? Yo, everybody, Chapter 87 broke the internet and everybody's still waiting on Chapter 88. <laughs> like, what's up? Frieza. With one stabbing strike, Frieza brings Gas's tragic and manipulated existence to an end. That's a crazy. lot of people missed this detail, That's but nuts. this attack was the true unveiling of his new deadly black form. And unlike Golden Frieza, where he had no regard for his own stamina, with this he chooses to use it in bursts, in a flash, so to speak. Almost like a retractable set of black claws puncturing his victim like before brother, immediately right? reverting back to his base, leaving everyone, including Vegeta and Goku, utterly dumbfounded, struggling to make sense of what just happened. Look at Vegeta. He was like, what the what? This dude's like, no way. Yeah, I mean, the next, I told you so. Mm -hmm. Happened. But even in those more traditional moments, Frieza offers curious quotes like, why there isn't a single thing in this universe I'm not privy yeah. to. In an instant, he exposes Alec for the coward and weakling that he is, that he has always known of his true intentions, and despite that, leverage the heaters for his forces That's better crazy. than anyway. With little effort, in his base form no less, Frieza sees to the erasure of the heater leader in a blinding flash of light, and just like that, the chief enemy thought to be the strongest in the universe and his master thought to be two steps ahead of everyone were both overpowered and outsmarted. Yo, that's, that's cool. That's crazy, though. Like, how did he know? Did he have, like, did these people have spies? Uh, Frieza has spies all over the planet, all over the universe? In mere moments. And the best part is, he took his time. He achieved this new powerful form, yes, but unlike times past, where his desires to dispose of these two got in the way, he didn't run to these two Saiyans as soon as he achieved this new impressive form. That's Unique a, to this exchange. That's he, different. That's different. Because uh, uh, the second he turned gold, he went to go <laughs> pay them a visit. And then when he turned black, he was like, nah, hold up. I'm, uh, I learned, he learned from his mistakes, basically. He evolved me takes out both Vegeta and Goku in a single fell swoop, he does so without killing them. In oh, fact, beyond testing the results of his decade-long training cycle, he doesn't even toy with them like he did Elec. 
Instead, he relents and decides to just leave. He shows these two Saiyans he once would have given everything to kill by any means mm. necessary mercy, offering them the chance to fight another day. Oh, you think he paying so, him, he paying him back? Now that we know that this is who and that was it. He's gonna pay is, back it again. Where does his story of spoiler that is the Oracle Fish praise be upon him? First, he says a rival worthy of Beerus will appear in Battle of Gods. Great. Then in the Tournament of Power, he says both Vegeta and Goku will be his strongest rivals. And then in the Granola arc, this slippery little fella claims the balance is shifting and soon the strongest in the universe will rise up. Oh, oh very foreboding, yeah, but yeah. oh, so juicy in detail. So in addition to this story with Frieza, we have this ongoing tale with Beerus and the Saiyans. And thankfully, these two stories are interweaving right this very second. As it stands, it seems Frieza is waiting for the right time to strike, meaning he's waiting for a version of Broly that is both under control and wants to fight with him. But there's just one small hiccup. Broly isn't under control and he doesn't want to fight with Frieza. I yeah, this Broly different though. This Broly, he good. He got good in his heart. So what would change him that would make him fight Goku and Vegeta um, and go with Frieza? I let, um, if it was the old DBZ Broly, I would think that he would be more inclined to go with Frieza and fight, but he was a controllable maniac. And this guy is kind of like being a control powered up maniac but he's not a maniac he's like he got good he loses control and gets mad but what will cause broly i'm asking a question what will cause broly to go with freezer what would what would change him no so not ideal all right so how do we connect these dots then simple dragon ball super superhero has the answer no not that one this one as it happens, the events of Superhero canonically take place after Black power Freeze's unveiling, up. and thankfully, there are, shall we say, some new additions and changes in the manga. Ever since the Resurrection F film, the linchpin of Goku and Vegeta's training under Whis has been less flashy transformation and more efficient movement and thought during a fight. Literally one page following the Black Freeze chapter, Vegeta is seen pensively staring into the sky, worrying... Such they continue the training and things. <sighs> Vegeta's always gonna be haunted by this man. I mean, he destroyed his planet, killed his pops, killed everybody, you know what I'm saying? So, Vegeta hates this dude for sure. He told Goku not to bring him back because he was gonna regret it. And now look, we got Black Freezer. About the battles that loom ahead and his recent failures. Jiren, Moro, Gas, and now Frieza. All of these foes have gotten the better of him. And interestingly, in chapter 93. Oh, for real, like they, they gave everybody a power up. Vegeta gets, he's strong, but he, he's a maniac too. He's like, he's kind of like Broly. Like he just loses control and goes crazy. He notes that none of them are physically stronger than he. He says, our physical bodies have long since been honed to their limits. In that respect, our training already made us on par with them. The key difference lies in how we wield our power. There's still too much. Yeah, you need to start losing your head. Hi, because hey. it emphasizes that from henceforth, we shouldn't think future powerful foes are superior physically, but rather more efficient and better trained mentally. This actually speaks to the improvement Frieza demonstrated following his recruitment into Universe 7 for the Tournament of Power. He was unable to train physically, but his mind was free to improve. That's on You know what? He might have picked up something, one I think or two from Gohan, because Gohan was a thinker in this in this uh, tournament. So that, that that might be something to look into. Honestly, kind of cool, and the degree to which that worked for Frieza in that short amount of time highlights his natural aptitude for combat. Furthermore, following Superhero, the number of characters that are capable of standing up to Frieza has grown from just Goku and Vegeta to also include characters like Gohan and Piccolo, which is interesting because these were the main... Yeah, what do y'all think about their power-ups, like, um, coming... After you, they introduce Golden Fruit, they introduce Black Freezer. Here comes Piccolo and Gohan, not too far behind, getting the power ups. I think that's just, yeah, like, I don't know, like, it's crazy. Players who stood up to Freezer during the Namek arcs, minus Krillin, of course, but I guess he landed Android 18, so who's the real winner hey, here, hey. right? During this material, Hello. Broly also seems to gain a greater degree of competence, both through Goku, Vegeta, and eventually Gohan's help. Now able to control his Super Saiyan state without losing his mind, it seems that Broly is well on his way to becoming Freezer's ideal partner in crime. So that takes care of half the problem. How does he figure out where Broly is, and more than that, how does he influence him? Admittedly, this is a reach, I know, but I have one potentially fun theory, and just hear me out. 
the very first time we ever heard from all right i'm hearing you out because broly he got a good heart so it would take something dramatic to change him so let's see what's up black frieza was in chapter 87 and during that chapter i took note of one specific line why there isn't a single thing in this universe i'm not privy to this implication that he has eyes and ears all over the universe that's oh, you got the cia the fbi i was like hey buddy the alphabet boys all work for frieza serve him is unsettling on its own but i do wonder if it's more than just a chilling bluff his specification of this universe got me thinking perhaps that those eyes and ears aren't all over the universe at all but rather in one familiar spot zuno we've actually seen in the oh, hold up now now that's that's a that's interesting that would be crazy if uh if freezer got this man right here under his pocket because he's a scary cat Yo, know, that, that's tough. That's a good. I like it. I like it. I'm digging it. Past how easily he gives into pressure from external powerful foes. How quickly do you think he might fold if Black Frieza waltzes up to him, or worse yeah, again, kidnaps him and uses him for his own bidding? If Frieza I actually has Zuno, then there kidnap. really isn't a Maybe, single thing in this universe he isn't. Or he could leave somebody He's there. Lying, and, literally, you know if this Zuno character has a detailed spreadsheet in his mind for Bulma's bust measurements across <laughs> time, then he definitely has all the answers Frieza requires. Word. Furthermore, it's not like it's without precedent dragon ball loves to take the easy way out of corners they've written themselves into and i think there's no more easy way out to solve this particular that's problem true, than true. by frieza just rocking up to zuno periodically asking uh is broly done cooking yet he could be he could have somebody there to uh, zuno's place or, or you think he might waste his time to go in there well, he might because he says he has an agenda to like take over to kill bears i think too right i have a mighty hankering for some broccoli also how do you make friends but here's the thing, right? Even if we accept that something happens that aligns right Broly with Frieza <laughs> and the two duke it out as two naturally gifted individuals that had to learn how to control their temper in order to be the most effective versions of themselves. What's this story going to be about exactly? How do you write a conclusion to a story like this that isn't just they fight the end? It also doesn't exactly help things that this modern Frieza is unlike any other villain this story has ever seen. Normally, antagonists or villains fall into one of two camps in Dragon Ball. Either they show up, get defeated, and swapped out or once they're defeated they join the forces of good both are easy to predict but frieza is neither he's dragon ball's first ever serious recurring villain and no that's a fact all right garlic jr but yeah frieza is the the number one villain they could have brought back cell but he can't get any stronger without a Serbi robots right so yeah that leaves that and then garlic is just i don't know he's just a fool <laughs> I do not count the peel-off gang. There just isn't enough precedent or information to make a leap with. The best moments of Dragon Ball for me have been the ones that feel both like a new contribution to the canon and harken back to the moments that grant them deeper significant... Wait. Frieza's entire story and change has been informed by one singular moment in time. Mm. What if the story is about that? A climax or arc Yo. built around Frieza's ultimate plan. An arc okay, built on the growth okay. and lessons this character has learned across the entire series. Yeah. True to Dragon across Ball, the entire it's been filled now, to the right? brim with because quality fights, but with the thematic I'm backdrop... I'm curious to see, like, what other... Like, his universe, you know what I'm saying, our universe, but I'm curious to see, like, what other planets he's been to, where has he been to, who's he been seeing, what universe he's been to now. Comparing Frieza's more Frieza's, Frieza's moments interesting, to bro. that which he is now. The most dangerous incarnation of himself, no doubt, but also, possibly, the most human. And while I'm not going to sit here and choreograph a complicated fight sequence between all of these characters for obvious reasons, I mean, this is primarily a video of... Right here, man. It's, my, it's a background piece right here. Frieza. On Frieza, after all, while there will be other characters, I will only be talking about those individuals during the instances that pertain specifically to Frieza and his development in this story. And so with that in mind, there is one specific scene I would love to see as a grand finale to this tale. A scene that I like to call out those individuals during the instances that pertain specifically to Frieza and his development in this story. And so with that in mind, there is one specific scene I would love to see as a grand finale to this tale. A scene that I like to call Frieza's 
final death. As this video has oh. outlined from the very beginning, Frieza's introspection, course correction, Frieza's and recollections death. have not just offered opportunities to see his darker sides, but additionally moments of protruding light. Choosing effort, choosing to train his mind, choosing to manage his emotions, Evolving. choosing to show mercy, and choosing to trust in the goodwill of Man, he chose to evolve, but he's still a conniving little punk. Of others. Each of these choices and snapshots from Frieza's long history within Dragon Ball Super demonstrate a death of sorts. And no, I'm not talking about the instances where he has literally perished. I'm talking about the death of who Frieza is and the subsequent birth of who he could possibly be. Countless moments have begun breaking down this once thought to be unshakable psychopath in Frieza, but break him down to what exactly? What lies underneath? Something good? Freezer is a tyrant. And he will never change. He's just involving his game. Now he, he got assassin skills now. He's sneaky, conniving. Mm -hmm. Something terrible? Whatever that something is, we truly do not fully understand how to predict it. And therefore, determining the answer to that very question should be the climax to this story, I think. Frieza's final moment. A chance for reconciliation or to simply double down like he always has. So much of Super has concerned itself with references to the past like Cell Max, Gohan's Beast Transformation, Piccolo's Sacrifice, Future Trunks Needing Help Again, Vegeta's Sacrifice Again during the Tournament of Power. The list could honestly go on and on, but the issue with these moments was never that they were callbacks, but that they were vapid and lazy mm. nostalgia bait trying to disguise the inorganic writing. Frieza's right. story doesn't need to inorganically harken back to better days. Because yeah, Frieza writes himself. He's already, like, they already set him up to be strong, like, in the beginning. Like, he didn't need no training to, str to be strong, so they can follow up with that. His story is defined specifically by those very days. Those very iconic moments that still hang in the backs of our minds. For Frieza, that final standoff between himself and Goku has literally haunted him for decades now. And so, I ask, what if, instead of being forced to think back to that very moment, he was physically dragged there through his own actions once again? The remnants of who... Classic. That's a classic scene right there. ...was. And to me, what's fascinating about this possible nostalgic circumstance is that it won't just say something about Frieza, it has the potential to say something about Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. For the bulk of Super, Goku and Vegeta have been at odds over what is and is not permissible in the heat of battle or in the name of battle. So much of Goku's story has seen him on the receiving end of ridicule at the hands of others for either being too lackadaisical or nonchalant in the face of certain danger. And so that's Goku. this is where that's the Goku. interesting part comes into play. Yeah. Does it necessarily need that should to be, be that, Goku that's, and Goku? That's going to be Goku's demise, him being too not worrisome and always like, eh, all right, well, whatever, we're going to fight. Alone standing before Frieza? I don't think so. In the moral and universe survival arcs, Goku's criticized for being incredibly reckless, but at the same time complimented as being this force that has changed others for the better. Namely, Piccolo and Vegeta. Goku certainly took reckless opportunities to fight them again, but through that they were given the chance to change, to be better. But now Frieza is back again. And Where did they put a <laughs> halo on top of the Emperor of Evil? It's crazy places everyone in danger again. Just like Namek, just like during the Androids arc, Resurrection F, Broly, and now this, his most sophisticated and deadly attack to date. How many times can one person be given a second chance? That, to me, is an interesting question, not for Goku to answer, but for literally everyone. Second chances, huh? I don't know about Freezer, but, you know, giving second chances is uh, sometimes to be unfair to others around you. To point to be kind and understanding, but also known to why to say, or when the Goku needs to learn to say enough is enough. So one or two chances can be good, but it's important to learn from them and try not to make the same mistakes again, Goku. All right. And so I'll present you a situation. What if Frieza were to lay there, defeated and alone yet again, finding himself in that all too familiar situation? What then? What if he looks up and sees Goku standing there, raising his arm like he did all those years ago in uh, Namek, and right as he's about to... You know, that'll be a great scene, though. Like, going back and forth with the memories and stuff. Like, he's, he's seeing his, his life flash before him. ...do what we all believe he will again. Vegeta grabs his arm. It's here Vegeta's story comes into play, and the scope of the situation expands even further. 
though not to the same extent as Frieza. The Yo, Namek Vegeta was different. Namek Vegeta was different. Vegeta is a character that too has undergone a lot of change. His sensitivity to consequence has made him a voice of reason when, in the past, he lashed out angrily. His willingness to look to others for guidance has allowed him to surpass Goku for the very first time in a one-on-one -on -one fight. And throughout the moral arc, we were forced to watch on as he had to carry the weight of his past sins, repenting for his former selfish, yeah. deadly ways. Piccolo- Yeah, Vegeta's the best, man. He had the greatest character development of all time. Correct me if I'm wrong. He has the greatest character development of all times has even noted in the past that the reason individuals like he and like vegeta exist at all and carry out the good that they do is because of this naive and selfish mercy goku offers however despite all of that vegeta in this the moment left would be resolute the he's lost left too arm. much at the hands of this monster he's certain that frieza is rotten to the core and cannot change like the others the have. Only and one, unlike yeah. goku we know vegeta is willing to do what he to be done. In a half he's been here heartbeat. before staring down at this pathetic monster begging crying and manipulating his way into a better position there's nothing this creature who has taken so much from him could possibly say that uh -huh. would surprise the prince anymore but fact. as he raises his hand he hears one faint plea do it there is no begging no lying no attempt at manipulation just a warrior wishing for it all to end quickly to be put out of his misery acceptance it's here that acceptance. one of two things could happen either we accept that the sacrifice required to save frieza's soul is too heavy a burden to pay or we accept that he is different that he's become one of the most effective fighters in the universe through his own hard work he's fought alongside our heroes earnestly and learned what it is to truly trust in yeah, that's true, right? He did, well, he did it on his own intentions, so he had his own intentions. And altruistically. And so, I think in this moment, Vegeta would be shocked by this response. To what extent his shock would be is up for debate, but this change hits to his core and his individual story too. A shock that could lead to momentary hesitation. A hesitation that lasts long enough for Broly to stand before him to stop him. The story nah, of bro. Broly's character isn't complicated, nor is it long. But it is brimming with emotion and trauma. A tragic but complicated childhood troubled by a society that rejected him, cast him astray, and a father that feared and tortured him. For his entire life, he's been the tool of weaker, angry, bitter men. And I think the resolution to Broly's story is for him to no longer... I think her getting killed might change him longer feel anger or to dance to the whims of others like he has. There are questions as to how Frieza could manipulate Broly in the first place to get him here. Answers that could range from as boring as Zuno told him of how his father died to Frieza's own admittance, allowing him to use it as yet another point of manipulation, pointing out to Broly that he saw the pain his father caused him and before he could do any more, stopped him. Whatever the case may be, nah. Broly needs to break. Yo, he tells that to Broly, bro, he'll get another hour beat down break free from these shackles, to no longer allow others to influence his behavior and force him to bring pain onto others because at his core, Broly is gentle. That's the tragedy of his character. And if I know, if he was like the uh, DBZ Broly, I'll be different. They would have to kill him. They would have to kill him. There's no way they would have had to kill him. If he were to stand up in that moment, he wouldn't want anyone else to die. Finally liberated by the anger that has defined him for so many years. But is this the right decision? Was this path Goku set Frieza down enough? Or was Vegeta's solution necessary and right? The interesting thing about this scenario is that there is technically no right or wrong answer if you're not clairvoyant. And if I was writing this, I wouldn't offer an answer. But as the tension is released, then everyone will have Dragon Ball Super have someone else join the scene, or rather, someone's. Beerus, Whis, and the Oracle Fish. At the very beginning of this story, an individual was born into the world of Dragon Ball Super, armed with a new mindset that assured his incredible power grew exponentially. With that power, his temperament too changed. And in this moment, I would love for Beerus and Whis to take this chance to offer Frieza the opportunity to one day become a destroyer. Nah, guy. they wouldn't. They, and if you think about it, know, it makes sense. Nah, they already offered it to Vegeta and Goku, though. Like, they changed their mind because of how strong he is now. He fits the initial prophecy, he possesses the requisite power, and now has the correct temperament and mindset. Done, he... 
Moreover, you he has literally experienced carrying out Beerus' dirty work when he wasn't willing to. There's hey, a Chad. certain scene oh, from my. Dragon Ball Super that I so much from him could possibly say that would surprise the prince anymore. But as he... I don't know. I went back to the... Whatever. Manifest to get another bitter and dark end. I got a question. Who has to destroy more planets? Freezer or Beerus? Rife with meaningful character reflection for the likes of Goku, or would he accept the possibility that he can find meaning through the light in a position that seems to fit him perfectly? This is about the moment where I'm sure you're hoping for me to give you some sort of definitive end with a clear message, but in truth, that's not at all what I want this to be. As I've said in this video and during my coverage of the Frieza arc in my Ultimate Review series, the conclusion to that story has been both my favorite and one I've not been able classic. to stop thinking That's about classic. since I saw it back when I was a little kid. It is a scene That's tortured by morbidly grotesque shades of grey with a message me, that bro. That's classic. both depressing <laughs> and uplifting in equal measure. That final scene on Namek was the culmination of a struggle between two staunch ideologies that were diametrically opposed, a battle that saw either side refuse to budge even an inch in the face of overwhelming evidence that the other wasn't willing. Mm -hmm. Goku in that he gave Frieza that chance despite what everyone had been telling him, and Frieza unwilling to... Yo, Goku keeps making the same mistakes again and again. Because even after he spurred him, Frieza was gonna murk him. Accept <laughs> defeat and make sense of the gift that was just handed to him. And in the end, neither man won. Victorious, but that wasn't what he wanted. I opened this video by saying that there's been this recent scene I haven't been able to stop thinking about. A scene that has made me consider this moment as a possibility for the future. A scene that would mean that this battle which came to its cataclysmic conclusion on Namek has in truth been raging on for decades. That is a classic, bro. Like, if it's not him and Vegeta, it's him and Frieza. Or Freezer and... Vegeta, that's in the nuts. background, in the hearts and minds of those involved ever since. Yeah, Warping and changing these characters to the point a very real outcome could be in the cards. Does this mean that the ending would be... I mean, think about it, like, Dragon Ball Z has some good character development, right? Like, even, I mean, the main characters, like Yamcha. <laughs> what happened to Yamcha, bro? I was, he was one of my favorite back when they was, like, the wolf. But whatever. Unambiguous? I certainly hope not. Because what made that scene on Namek so powerful to me was how much it made me consider the decisions that were made, with it ultimately leaving both Goku and Frieza in want. I do wonder, however, if through this approach, if Frieza were to accept the possibility of more through becoming the God of Destruction for Universe 7, could we achieve that same morally ambiguous conclusion? Only this time, instead of concluding on a down note drenched in darkness, we end on the possibility for a brighter tomorrow. Whatever the case may be, I would love to hear your thoughts on this and how likely you think it is for that scene to come full circle like I've outlined here. This video has honestly been insane and odds are all of this is absolutely not going to happen, but it has been very fun to consider nevertheless. Predicting what Toriyama might have done is like trying to catch smoke with a sieve, but I tried my best. And my hope is that in the process you had fun. There's a certain scene from Dragon Ball Fusion, so, only this time... That being said... Totally, uh, totally, what did I say? Totally not marked. That was an uh, awesome, totally not marked. This was an awesome, awesome predicting, um, prediction. Your your uh, your look on the outcome, you know, what could be, what could be not. Um, I love that. You guys should check him, check his channel out. It's totally not marked, it's called. Um, and um, I, I love this job, man. I, love, I like Dragon Ball, and I hope the story, I hope Toriyama had, a lot of uh, rounds in the chamber before he passed away. So I'll wait till Toro can work with it and go from it. And then, you know, get from it, get the stories from there. But um, with that being said, I don't think Toriyama is going to do a bad job. I think he's, uh, him and, and Toro Toro were, were, were linked at the hip. Um, I'm looking forward to Dragon Ball Daima. So I hope they don't put Dragon Ball Super to the back burner. And uh, they continue with the storyline because I wouldn't mind seeing a, a arc with Black Freezer or Freezer in, in hand. Something, you know, crazy. Like, I just want to see what he's been up to, what planet universe he went. And, uh, you know, throw me a couple fillers in there. I'm down. 
Whatever I said, no trap out. Hit the like and comment.